Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So, um, similar to the GTX 1060 CMD, CMD edition that I showed off recently, I want to do the same for my next CMD edition card, that being the GTX 960 that I uh, repaired. Um, well, it works now, it's not really a full proper repair because I just went around the problem instead of solving it, which is why that white wire exists. This one makes one of the BIOS chips work because um, like the card has a dual BIOS system where there's a little SMD switch that determines which BIOS chip is active. That switch was destroyed and so were its pads. This wire simulates the switch in one of the two possible states so that one of the BIOS chips always works. That That's what the repair does. Um, and as to overclocking modifications, there's not much going on on the front. There is one solder wire right here, which is for voltage control on the uh, memory voltage. I don't remember what this controller is, um, but it goes to the feedback pin, like this black wire goes to the feedback pin. Um, there's another black wire for vCore that's just routed through here, like uh, around the inductors and around the capacitors a little bit for like cable management. Um, and then we just have some needed eraser on some sensitive areas on the front because this is prepped for sub-zero overclocking. The entire rest is going on on the back. So, uh, there's quite a lot more going on here. Um, this little bit of hot glue disconnected from the PCB. Um, but yeah, so we have more needed eraser, a lot of capacitors, and more wires. So this is the uh, memory voltage control wire that you saw on the front, which goes into the uh, screw terminal here, uh, which is how I like do my volt mods right now. I um, hook these up to an Elmo EVC, which can then use its onboard DAC to basically simulate a um, potentiometer soldered to the card, which is um, which I prefer over an actual potentiometer because first off the EVC software is a lot easier to adjust than like some potentiometer where you have to like screw around with a screwdriver while the card is running, uh, and also you get a voltage readout over the EVC, which is what the uh, white wires are for. Um, so yeah, then the other control wire is right here, and then like goes to the front, comes back out here, and then into that terminal. Um, this is for voltage control in the vCore controller, which is an NCP81174. That is actually the same voltage con controller as we had on the 1060. Uh, and this, I actually don't know if I wired it to feedback or to ref in this time. I think I wired it to ref in as well on this one, because I think I put in a positive offset in the EVC. Um, but yeah, so like same concept, you go to either the feedback or the ref in, um, uh, pin uh, connected to the EVC DAC and then you get voltage control. And then the white wires are actually a bit better than on the 1060 because specifically the core wire, you can kind of see it a bit, it goes like right here, which is right behind the core. On the 1060 I only had my sense wire at the capacitor bank at the output, which always reads a bit higher voltage than what the core actually gets. So this voltage reading is gonna be more accurate um, than on the 1060. And the same kind of goes for the memory, like I'm taking it from a capacitor behind one of the memory chips on the front. The output bank is not really that far away, but you know, technically it's a bit better. Um, I could have also taken it from here, but I guess my cable management just wouldn't have been that nice if I did. Um, so yeah, like the memory voltage isn't, this doesn't draw a lot of power from the memory VRM, so th there's not going to be that big of a voltage difference compared to what you get on the core. Um, so yeah, so white wires sends black wires uh, control just for the EVC. Uh, if you're wondering how the entire EVC volt mod works, I've made a video about that. Uh, you can look that up where I go into more detail how the entire thing works. And then for cap mods, there is a single 1200 microfarad 2.5 volt cap on the memory. I was actually planning or like actually tried to put an SMD polymer on the front here as well, but that didn't work quite out because, um, yeah, like the capacitors you got, like, 
it, it didn't quite stick and uh, because the area is kind of clotted and it's not that important anyway because it's just the memory on a 128-bit card. I just kind of didn't bother. Um, so, yeah, that is it for memory. And then for core, there's quite a lot more. Um, I also didn't put any SMD polymers here. These, where the other 1200 uh, microfarad ones are, are technically SMD polymer pads. But I already had a volt modded the core VRM at that point. And this wire would have gotten desoldered if I had used hot air in this area. So I decided to put on 1200s instead of SMD polymers here. Which is why it's in kind of like this weird round shape, because the pads are like really close together. And then I used some 820 25 volts uh, piggybacked on top of the through hole legs of the capacitors that are on the front. Um, and yeah, so that's all the mods on the card. Um, as to what I could do more, like there could be more cap modding on the memory. There could be some input filtering modding, because um, like this is the input filtering that the core VRM gets in addition to like, I think this is input filtering as well, these motor layer ceramics. Um, there could be a bit more. I could like also piggyback more capacitors on the back because it, it did help with the 1060 quite a lot. Um, there's also like, that's all the input filtering that the memory gets. There's like two unused spots right here. Um, so I could try input filtering modding on this, I don't, uh, I don't think it will do that much. But if I'm bored and feel like doing it, I might as well. Um, and then other mods is actually uh, prying off the needed eraser and like putting some immortalized ceramics behind the memory and also the core. If you watched the repair video, you remember that um, a lot of immortalized ceramics behind the core were damaged or missing. I didn't really fix that. Because uh, the card just kind of works without them, but it will no doubt work better with them. Uh, it's just that I really didn't feel like soldering all those small fiddly things onto the card. Um, which is a potential cause for why the card hasn't done as well as I would have expected. But... I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, so what did the card do? Um, the main... The main problem that the card has is that at ambient, all these mods do basically nothing. Like, the cap mods might have helped a bit, but, um, like, voltage control just doesn't really change anything. You can give it 1.35 volts V-Core and it will do the exact same clock it does at 1.2 volts. At ambient, that is. I've had the card sub-zero once. Uh, right before I lost all the M2 nuts, and it did better clocks there, but I actually ran into a different pl problem that I might still have to fix, which is that uh, the card was like power throttling, even though it wasn't hitting the power limit. So this card has like a 216 watt limit or something like that, which is enough for a 960. Like a 960 is very tame when it comes to power consumption. Uh, it should not have hit 216 watts, and it didn't. It reported only around 160, but it was power throttling nonetheless. And I tried making a custom BIOS that has a 900 watt limit or anything like that, but every time I tried to flash the BIOS, it says the file is corrupted. So I guess my Maxwell BIOS editor doesn't work, or maybe it only works on like of the 900 series cards, like the 960 is one of the newer 900 series cards. It could be like, like I have Fermi BIOS editor and it only works on 580s. It doesn't work on any other 500 series card. Maybe it's similar for Maxwell that it only works on like 980s or 980 Ti's. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't work with this apparently. Um, so I might have to shunt mod the card. Uh, like just put 5 milliohms on top of these. Just do a like a shunt mod on the 1060. Um, it, it is kind of a weird behavior because at ambient I can run way more voltage than I did Sub-Zero and it doesn't hit the power limit. But Sub-Zero it hits the power limit. Um, 
I could also just try removing the INA3221. As far as I know on 900 series you can just do that and the power limit will be gone. Um, I could do that, I have a PMD now, so I don't really need the onboard power readings, I just kinda like having power readings to kinda guess like uh, how big... Like I, 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 I use the power draw of the card as kind of a indicator of like how much heat the card will now produce with the extra voltage that I'm giving it and I'm trying to like guess like is the extra heat actually worth the extra stability from the voltage or is it maybe just like drawing way too much power and, and actually just having it run a bit colder at less voltage might be more worth it or something like that. But since I have a PMD now I don't need the onboard voltage monitoring so if I run into the power limit problem again I might either shunt mod this, which would be the easier way, or just completely remove the INA3221. Because, like, I'm not entirely sure if a shunt mod would actually help, because it wasn't hitting the limit and it was still power throttling. So, I don't know. Um, if you remove this thing, it just completely... it Like, the power readings just disappear. So, maybe that will be my last resort if a shunt mod doesn't work. Um, but yeah, for now the plan is just um, once I have time, which likely won't be tomorrow, um, but maybe on the weekend, uh, I will set this up, do some more Sub-Zero, and depending on how it goes, I might do more mods with this, or I might just, you know, clock it as high as it goes, have my fun with it, and uh, get some HW bot points. Um, same goes for the 1060. That one's been ready to go for ages and I just wasn't able to run it because I was missing all my M2 nuts, somehow. I don't know where they went, I had like 20 of them. They're all gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Yeah, this is another CMD Edition graphics card. This is kind of like the theme, how I'm gonna go for now. Like, how I'm gonna mod my cards. I will use the EVC for vote modding primarily. I will like use cap mods like literally. This is all the capacitors I have. I have enough, I would say. So I'm just gonna load the card with um, as much capacitance as a, as I can possibly can, or until I get bored. Um, and then just like needed eraser. Just kind of like have most things done with the EVC, like that. Just kind of be how how my mods will work from now on. Because if you look at like another card, I have this right here, which is my very first GTX 580 Direct CO2. You can kind of see, like this is using potentiometers. This is using like legit fire hazard uh, voltage sense wires, and it doesn't actually have any cap mods on it. But like I kind of want to avoid this. Uh, I, 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 I don't want my volt mods to look like this. Um, like, this is still a lot of wires, but this is a lot more tidy than having, like, potentiometers hanging off of your card, because this just plugs into the EVC, you get a voltage readout, you get voltage control, it is all just one big plug. Um, like, I, I like that more. Also, like, the uh, screw terminal thing, um, which means, like, if for some reason you like pull on this on accident, you don't rip out anything that's on the card, you just like, you know, pull on the terminal. Like worst case, you disconnect some hot glue like I did here. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if there's gonna be more cards like this. There's a couple cards that, yeah, we have time for this, I can show it. There's like two cards that are currently as a project. Remember this? This is the GTX 980 I repaired. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what I did, but I blew up, like, three more Diamoses on this, and at that point I was just too bored to keep fixing it, so I just decided I'll e-power it. And that's the current state of it, like, I kind of ruined the power plane in this area, um, and this is currently just kind of waiting for any power board that's ready for it, like, the card is, like, you know, th this is ground, like, all of these are ground, uh, that's V-Core right there. This is memory voltage. Um, I might be looking into using these switch nodes as more ground. Um, that might be a thing that could still happen. I'm just going to need to find a reliable way to bridge the ground to the switch node over the like D3 
the Amos pad. But yeah, like this 980 is getting e-powered. And then there's also the 780, which is also getting e-powered. Uh, this 780 was actually sent in by a uh, subscriber of the channel. Um, I Yeah, this card was traded in for the um, shroud and backplate of the 980 Ti G1 Gaming. Um, that turned out to be like non-fixable. So uh, th that card actually did quite a lot for me. I, I, I got a 980 Ti classified PCB for the core of it. And I got this for the um, shroud and backplate of it. Um, so this is a 780. It's supposedly, like the core memory is supposedly fine. The problem it had is this. So it came in like this. Uh, the uppermost two phases were like dead. And you know, like I didn't actually drill this out. Like someone worked on this card and actually knew what they were doing. Um, but like, there's no way you get all the six phases back on this. And even with six full phases, this PCB is very borderline. So I was like, I already have an e-powered 780, but I was just like, Ugh, might as well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, otherwise the card is like trash. And it, it, you know, if it works, like, I have no idea how good this is. I've never had this powered up because the VRM was a mess. Like, it, it actually still had a short circuit on it, I think. Like, it didn't work. Um, even with this, like the repair wasn't finished. So I just went ahead and like uh, did some EPOW preparations. It's in a very similar state, like I've had, I have V-Core here. This is a whole bunch of ground. This is memory voltage. This right here is memory voltage. Um, I Yeah, I've bridged these, most of these. So the uh, this is ground now as well. Um, so yeah, so this also needs an EPOW. So like right now I have these two cards that like need e-powers. Um, and I have a bunch of like theoretically working e-power boards, like that 980 Ti became one. I have like two direct CO2 e-power boards. Um, the one problem is I don't really have a great way of hooking them up because the direct CO2 power boards don't really have, don't really work well with copper plates, which is what I want to use. And the 980 Ti power board, I'm not actually quite sure if it works fully. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to figure something out with that. But that just went completely off the rails. I didn't want to talk about this. But yeah, <laughs> this is the GTX 960 CMD edition. Uh, hopefully this does well. Like at Ambient, it kind of sucks because it doesn't seem to really care about anything. It doesn't really seem to scale, which is a thing I've been told about Maxwell, but like mostly 980 Ti's, I thought the smaller Maxwell cores still scale at ambient, but apparently they don't. Um, so I, I I hope that Sub-Zero on this is gonna work better, because um, yeah, like otherwise this is a whole lot of wasted time. Um, and yeah, so video is long enough now, so uh, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Uh, and until next time, goodbye.